Tea, and welcome to Tea with Cecil. Tonight, um, I'm going to be talking with the fabulous Julia Cho. Um, Julia is a producing artistic director. She's an actor. She's a writer. Uh, she's the founder of Artists at Play, one of them. Um, she's born and raised in Los Angeles. Uh, uh, she graduated from UC Berkeley. Um, she made her professional acting debut in the Bay Area premiere of An Alphabet, presented by the John Cage Trust Fund. And then she starred in word for word production of Amy Tan's Immortal Heart at the Magic Theater in San Francisco. She has performed and toured shows with East West Players, Will and Company, Lodestone Theater Ensemble, Here and Now, as well as readings for the Blank Theater, Playwrights Arena, Pasadena Playhouse, and the Center Theater Group. She's a fabulous actress. Um, uh, in the summer of 2009, Julia embarked on her first producing venture, leading an ensemble cast, calling themselves Actors at Play, which we'll talk about mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. our conversation. <laughs> uh, uh, Julia is probably best known for playing Charlotte Liu in the Emmy Award-winning web series, The Lizzie Bennett Diaries. Other credits include films like Larry Crown, the web series Jeff and Ravi Fail History, uh, and a lot of other things. Um, welcome, Julia. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, that was kind of a trip for you to just take me back through time. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I forgot about those credits. Bios are weird. You know? Aren't they? They're really weird. I never know what to put in them. And I always feel like I don't know if I'm doing the zingy zing thing right, you know? Yeah, you know, and it's funny. I, I feel like I, I I have variations of what you shared, but, you know, depending on what they need your bio for, yeah. like sometimes they have a word count. And then sometimes like, I think sometimes my producing uh, self takes over and it's like, is this, you know, if it's going to be read out loud, I can give you a shorter version. Right. Like I preemptively sometimes share like the uncut extended version and then like, you can just read this part if it's going to be said out loud because you know we don't all need to sit there like if it's like an event or something and you're yeah. like, oh, just let's wrap it and, up and sometimes um i put like little um uh things like uh you know i don't know i just did a one bio and like at the end of it i was like her pandemic projects have consisted of you know <laughs> this and that and um and then like sometimes um like if i when i did my star wars book like i wrote like you know in my bio it's like you know she waited online for six weeks waiting for star you know like i hey, some sort of fun zinger at the end yeah, yeah. It's, but yeah. it's different right when it's like when you know someone's going to be reading the bio yeah. as opposed to like you know being shared yeah. in different contexts yeah, yeah bios are funny yeah they're funny um <laughs> okay good evening uh, good evening, evening. Um, okay, first question, as you know, I ask mm -hmm. everyone the same questions. Uh, what kind of uh, drink are you drinking? And uh, is it your favorite? What is it? Uh, it is it is one of my favorites. Um, it's called I even like, have like the little packet here It comes in a little instant packet. Um, it's called misugaru, which mm. is a Korean grain multi grain powdered mm. drink. Um, and uh yeah there's something very familiar about it i know it doesn't sound quite appetizing but it's, it's like it's and then you add it at you add hot water and it's just kind of this creamy nutty goodness especially like if you don't want caffeine yeah yeah um yeah it's that nice. sounds amazing and, and it, it sounds healthy yeah healthy i was just gonna say it sounds really healthy you could even sprinkle it on like shave ice you know sprinkle it on ice cream it's like a little you know it can add a little flavor boost to things well, as well without being overly sweet, which is like a thing that, you know, Asian desserts, like you don't want it too sweet. We right. typically like lean towards fruits and natural sugars and multi-grain powdered drinks, apparently. Yeah. I, next time I see you, uh, may, can you please bring me a packet so that I can try it? Cause it's, yeah. Sounds oh my gosh. I'll just send some over. And it, this is the thing. It's like, I don't have a go-to. I mean, so many things I took for granted growing up in a Korean household. And now it's like, I have to like kind of be a noob and like go to H Mart and like, oh, what are the different brands that are available? Because I actually don't know which one I like <laughs> because I was just drinking it at home, yeah. you know, yeah. without actually paying attention. Yeah. Now here I am as an adult trying to like retroactively yeah. do that research. Um, it's uh, really interesting when I was writing my memoir, you know, my dad is a um, neuroscientist and his specialty was memory. And um, 
in in the in my graphic novel memoir, Girl on Film, um, you know, part of it is talking about how we, uh, you know, why we remember and why we forget things. Mm. And one of the conversations that we had, I recorded um, us talking, was about how like I make my grandmother's donuts recipe, but it doesn't quite taste exact like. And, but every once in a while I make it and it's exactly the right, you know, but there's this sort of like, there's this sort of the memory of a taste and the taste it's like, there's this sort of distance between it. Yeah. That's such a good way of putting it. You know, I was just like lamenting to, uh, um, to someone, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people that I wish I cooked more because I just cannot, you, you can't go out no matter how many Korean restaurants I go to no one's going to have the exact right. same flavors yeah. that I got from my mom's cooking, my grandmother's cooking, you know? Yeah. So it's like the next best thing really is for me to figure out yeah. how to recreate the dishes myself. It's yeah. just, yeah. And it, and it'll, yet. and it'll still be, it'll still be different. Cause exactly. you know, yeah. So that's the amazing thing. Well, I am having some, uh, I felt a little stressed out today about the world. So uh, I, I'm getting, I, I got some tension tamer tea. So, Is that what it's actually called? Tension yeah, it's tamer? Called tension. I love it. Yeah. So, I love it. Uh, you know, it's got like a little tiger on it and it smells like kind of like, I don't know. It's got like, like the, just, is the tiger, the tension and I the guess, tea will help tame. Yeah. Tame. Yeah. I guess it's the tape. You tame the, yeah, exactly. You tame the tiger. Mm, what does it taste like? What is that flavor pro- like, profile? It's like, I feel like it's got like some kind of licorice kind of thing in it. You know, mm, okay. Like some kind of slippery elm or some kind of, you know. Yeah, you know, I tend to stay away from, see, if if I wasn't drinking this misugaru, I would, I opt for um, English breakfast, the right. black teas with all the honey and milk, yeah. Yeah. cream, sugar, all yeah. of that. Um, yeah. yeah, so I tend to stay, I'm not as familiar with the fruity minty variety. It's not fruity, it, the, because I'm not a fruity, I'm not a fruity tea person yeah just anything beyond black tea I'm kind of like like a little clueless about black tea I like the tension tamer and then I like like mint tea or chamomile tea Mm -hmm. like those are my that's my those are my areas you know Mm -hmm. um but you know but I'll try you know I'll try things yeah try things um okay next thank you for coming and having a little warm something with me (laughs) um uh all right who are you Julia Cho and how do we know each other who am I? Who are you? Question. Um, I am a uh, Korean American creative, uh, first born child of Korean immigrants, and yeah, just um, I, I, you know, I'm primarily an actor, but over the years, uh, a theater producer. As, and especially during the pandemic, that role has definitely come more to the forefront. But also, like, director? <laughs> very, very strong question mark. Um, and voiceover artist. So, um, yeah, which is I, why I guess I kind of defaulted to the word creative at yeah. the start there. Um, because that's kind of how I'm seeing myself lately. Yeah. But um, yeah, I guess that's me in a nutshell. Yeah, and how, I, it, it's true. You do do a lot of things. And I think that part of our creative paths anyway are is uh, to, uh, you know, part of our growth is to expand how we, how we yeah. are. Yeah, and I, I think especially during these times, um, I know I've been trying to keep myself open to exploration. Like, you know, the big... Uh, <laughs> very funny way I, I presented uh, the word director. I mean, an opportunity came up from a dear playwright friend and I was really kind of pushing back until finally she was like, what, what is the problem? I want you to direct this. It's like, okay. Um, but yeah, it just, it, it, the opportunity presented itself. And, you know, I, I knew I could do it, but, you know, you still grapple with kind of the uncertainties and, you know, can I actually call myself that? And it it got, you know, I, and I didn't, I realized I didn't have to, like, now I am parading myself around as a director. It's just something that I knew I could do. And I did it, you know, and maybe it'll never happen again, but I did it. And I'm, I'm really glad I did. Um, as for how we know each other, I believe it's through 
shamers allowed. Yes. Shamers. Um, shamers, good old shamers. Um, and I think I was introduced to that group of amazing writers through Sarah Kuhn, Margaret Dunlap originally. Yeah. And, um, I, I was just one of the lucky select actors who would get invited to read pieces aloud from all of you fantastically uh, talented folks. And it was, it was a blast. I always look forward to those, to those gatherings at Sarah Watson's. And, yeah. Um, yeah. I can't wait till we do them again. Like, it's funny, like I, I've had Kate um, and, uh, Sarah Watson. Yes. Um, uh, Sarah's hasn't come out yet, but, um, uh, and, um, you know, when we talk about how we know each other through shamers, it's like the writing in cafes that mm-hmm. we talk about, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. we know each other from this fabulous part of shamers, which is, um, uh, we, where we bravely would, uh, the writers would read work and we read it out loud. Right. Most of the people are television writers or screenwriters. And so they would bring some fabulous actors uh, to professionally read uh, the stuff aloud with us doing the supporting roles. And it was so, you're always so amazing um, in that. And I'm so glad that we met. Um, that Yeah. We met. Okay. I'm just realizing now that so the original group was it always called just the shamers and that component was shamers allowed yes <laughs> because i that's how i was introduced to the group so i thought the original like the full name was shamers allowed and then you called yourselves the shamers like in an abbreviated way <laughs> yeah it was shaming is when we're in the cafes uh-huh, and okay. shamers allowed is when we read our work out loud gotcha okay yeah it's so funny okay. it just hit me now after yeah. all these years. Yeah. Um, and I feel really, I mean, you've worked with some of the people at the, at Shamers Aloud, like, mm-hmm. uh, like Margaret and Kate. Yeah. Um, and then, um, and then I felt really lucky because during the pandemic, I wanted to do a sort of, I wanted to mark um, having been alone for the entire I, well, the pandemic is still going on, but for yeah. that that real intense lockdown yeah. um, part, um, and uh, you know, no human touch for thirteen months, which was very difficult, and I felt like an astronaut, and that like NASA should study me, and uh huh, uh-huh. um, and I wrote these monologues for a few actors um, about sort of isolation, and and I wrote one for you, and and you're just brilliant in it and thank you oh my gosh no I mean it it, mean it's it's to the credit of your writing and I think it was at a point where I I was also funny enough the piece was called feast but I think I was also starving for some sort of like outlet as an actor and even even I feel like only recently have I felt like my actor self was coming out of this kind of imposed hibernation you know um so when you gifted me this monologue, I mean, I wish I actually had more time to really like do that, you know, the actory like deep dive homework. Um, but yeah, it was such a lovely opportunity. And I feel like because I just trust you and your work when you just offered this, um, you're like, would you be interested? It was like, yes, like without question. So um, yeah, it was, it was a a lovely kind of marker of that time too. And that's that's what I wanted. You know, I think, you know, that day is coming up March 13th. Mm -hmm. um, And I think I'm going to like re put it up, you know, like, I mean, there's still a website, it's called Houston. Do you read? And, um, and I think I'm just going to like, sort of like do it every March 13th and just mm-hmm, be like, here's mm-hmm. the, here's the thing. Um, Cause I yeah. feel like it's like a little time capsule of, you know, and I don't know how to deal with anything except with art, even though art has been hard to make during mm-hmm, this time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, For sure. So uh, thank you. Um, uh, okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> question mm. oh what are uh what are you working on now are you working yeah. on anything? what are you what are you up to I actually am um uh yeah so this I know I I'm 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 excited but also like a little wary of like things seemingly um picking up but like to that same level of 
busyness we were all kind of running around with um, in the before times. Um, so trying to be, you know, mindful as I navigate that. But um, I am currently uh, working on a voiceover dubbing project. So um, did I sign an NDA for that? <laughs> you forget but yeah let's yeah. Op, let's just let's just air on the safe side but um yeah you know voiceover has been something that I've been um been able to kind of get into more during the pandemic for for obvious reasons um and yeah so that I'm working on this project which is which is um kind of ongoing which is nice as you know to have that regular work for a few weeks and um working with artists at play we have some exciting things coming up including our first in person event oh. this summer um yeah we're working on a new play commission so our first time helping build a play from the ground up which we're very excited about and um, I am just on my own working with um, my playwright friend, Stephanie Kyungsun Walters, who was the one who invited me to direct a play of hers for the UC Santa Barbara. Oh, wow. Yeah, they have a festival and it was supposed to be in person, pivoted to virtual at the last minute because it was right at the height of Omicron. Um, but I, um, it's, it's a play about Korean Americans in Koreatown. And, you know, I, I grew up in LA, LA's Koreatown. She, however, Stephanie grew up in Philly, but it's fascinating to see how many parallels there are mm -hmm. between our two Koreatowns. <laughs> um, so, I mean, that's probably why I fell in love with her work, but because, we had, um, you know, student actors and as amazing as they were, uh, I, I'm hoping to provide this opportunity to put together Korean American actors in my circle to really give her um, the sense of how this play can sound and feel with, with the amazing rewrites that she was able to um, knock out during that rehearsal process. So that's, yeah, that's really fun. What's the play called? Can you? Can you it's called yeah, I, I think so. And it, um, it's called Acetone, Acetone Wishes and Plexiglass Dreams. Okay, that's a great title. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like it's a play that's also like on the cusp. It's been getting into a couple of other yeah. um, programs and festivals. So yeah, I mean that's something that I'm just excited about. Um, and you know getting just keeping that artistic engine running um and then also you know just on on my knocking out those self-tape auditions yeah yep, yep. Um, so you, yeah I, I let's not get into that but i'm sure you know other actors well, it's, yeah it's too. like me with pitches it's like you pitch I, and, you know i mean it's different i feel like actors have it way way harder because it's like <laughs> it's like your whole body in person <laughs> right but also like being expected to build an entire home studio yeah. with you know what the constraints of your actual home um yeah. so there's all that but you know I, I I feel like I've passed the you know the really um <laughs> I felt like I was at like a really low point where like I hate I hate these you know, it was always just like, oh God, let's get through this one. And then, <laughs> so I went through that phase and it's like, okay, I got these, this is not going to end. You know, I feel like even before the pandemic, the, the turn towards virtual auditions was already yeah. happening. So this is definitely going to be here to stay. Um, so let's, let's figure out how to make this fun. And if not fun, at least like tolerable, like, so I'm not just like phoning it in. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because I'm sure that there's a different energy doing a virtual casting session than there is doing a um, in person one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, I, I don't mind not driving. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, that not having to deal with the parking and the traffic yeah. and but all you that. Could, like yeah. audition in London now. Right. You know? Right. 
that yeah. could happen. I, I could be anywhere. You could be anywhere. You could, you yeah. could, you could, you know, you could audition for something that's somewhere else. And, you know, yeah. that's like, I think that's a good advantage. Yeah. Uh, but what, can you tell me a little bit about, um, cause I feel like you touched on it, but can you tell me a little bit about artists, um, in play? Cause I feel like that's like, yeah. Well, so, so artists, artists at play is oh, the sorry, theater. No, no, no. But artists, artists at play is the theater producing collective that I helped found back in 2011. But, um, you, you mentioned this in, in my, in my bio. So prior to that, prior to officially founding artists at play, a couple of actor friends and I, very typical story, ragtag group of actors were like, we're going to put on our own show. So that was actors at play. Oh, okay. And it's because we decided to, um, it was actually because I was like, I think funny enough back then I was like, I think I can direct. I think I can be a director um, back in 2010. And, you know, these um, friends of my actor friends, we had all met through the here and now theater company. And we were just kind of itching to do more of our own work. And um, it was a Valentine's day theme show. So um, we, I remember driving <laughs> with a few of these friends and, you know, the uh, children at play sign. So that's what actors at play came from. And the name of the show was Beware of Cupid, which was also like the logo was like the street sign, beware of dog or what have you, but with like a little Cupid silhouette. Um, so it went fantastically well for what it was. And we had like a sold out three week run. But at the end of that process, I was like, I'm not a director. I'm actually not very good. I, I just don't have that. I, I feel like actor uh, directors need to have that larger, big picture overall vision. Yeah. And as an actor, you know, one of my strengths, I feel like is really focusing in on the details. And so that's something, a valuable lesson that I, I learned throughout that process. But because we had to produce it ourselves, I was like, I think I'm kind of into producing, like, which is basically everything that needs to happen behind the scenes in order to yeah. put up a show. And so um, during that process, I was working with Stephanie Lau, who ended up becoming one of the founding members, along with Peter Kuo, who was kind of my directing consultant, unofficial mentor, because he's a director. Um, and then Marie Renvelez, who knew both of them, because they all worked at East West Players together. Um, and so when Peter and I decided to put on, uh, we had worked together on um, a play called Letters to a Student Revolutionary, which was about um, these two pen pals, one in America, one in China, leading up to the Tiananmen Square Massacre. So like beautiful play, very heavy subject matter. So Peter and I, having enjoyed working together so much, we we're like, let's do another show, but maybe it can be a comedy. And so we had... I happened to, because I graduated from UC Berkeley, I had a lot of friends still up in the Bay. And I had a few friends in the world premiere production of Ching Chong Chinaman, which is a play by Laura Yi, who is now like the most produced playwright across the country. And so I remember like Googling, like it hasn't been done in LA yet. Like maybe we can do this play, like Ching Chong China. It's so funny. It was just like, it was, I, you know, it, it just turned all the old like Asian American stereotypes like on their heads, you know, and it was just a very exciting, bold comedy that hadn't been done in LA before. So the four of us, uh, you know, um, we were going to just do this show as a one off. And because we realized we enjoyed working together and we worked well together and then this opportunity came up to partner with the Ford Amphitheater when they still had their black box space. And we made it very far. We made it to maybe like the top four, didn't make the ultimate cut. And then we're like, we have all this paperwork and like stuff we drafted to pretend we were like a, a legit organization. And so like why, maybe we should just become an actual company. And so that's how our, and then I, I took, I kind of took the name Actors at Play and then artists at play was born. And now it's been like 10 plus years since Love that it. first show. 
That sounds amazing. <laughs> and you know, what's really funny is that, you know, um, so uh, uh, everybody out there, uh, one of the things <laughs> that I do is that I've been, star I started this uh, one fun thing that you're involved with. Yes. I play writing, uh, play reading aloud. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I, you know, I was looking for um, Asian American uh, plays. Yeah. I almost picked that, like, that's not the one that I picked, but I almost I, picked that one. That's so funny. I could cast yeah. it for you. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I'll send you the link for the, uh, I'm going to, you know, for, uh, I picked it yesterday. I can't remember. Yeah. What it was yeah. But, uh, but uh, yeah, another, like, wait, that sounds familiar. Yeah. I mean, another, and then the, speaking of the play reading group, such a fun thing that you also invited me to. And I was immediately like, yes, please. Um, and we've read some, it's been, I, I it, there have been some interesting plays that are considered classics, right? Yeah. Like, so it's been very interesting to read for the first time or revisit some of yeah. these so-called classic plays. Yeah. But, um, and, yeah. You know, I, you know, talking about like sort of stretching and reinventing oneself and like whatever is that I really want to be a playwright. Like That's I- That's right. I remember you saying you know? that. And so I did take over the um, summer and fall, I took a short course in playwriting at RADA and- um, and I uh, did, you know, and so I did that and um, yeah. And so I'm trying to sort of, uh, you know, just think about stories in a different way. And that's kind of like my, um, my new dream uh, to do that during the pandemic. I took a, a playwriting class as well with um, Eric Patterson, who's one of our yes. trainers and um, began a play there and then never finished it because I got books to write I got things you know it's you like actually have yeah, things to yeah. do yeah so um uh so yeah so just you know trying to trying to think about that and I feel like the advice that I always give people who want to write comics or people who want to write young adult is well you got to read young adult and you got to read comics and mm -hmm. so it was like well if I want to read plays I really I mean if I want to write plays I gotta yeah. read some plays yeah and it's so much more fun to read a play with a group of people and hear it and yeah. and then have such vibrant discussions about about them mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. afterwards so yeah, um, yeah yeah I I thought of you actually for the the reading I'm trying to get together of acetone wishes so I'll, I'll be sending you an invite for that I mean it's going to be another like kind of what we've been doing just Great. it's supposed it. to be a casual like I mean virtual but like yeah. as if we were sitting around someone's living room I'm kind, in. Of, kind of reading I'm totally in 100 <laughs> percent in um okay uh okay blah, 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 blah. Oh, I to, sorry I don't know what my questions are by heart. Um, <laughs> How do you figure out what you want to work on? How do you Ooh. figure out? So, and and I'm curious, especially, you know, I've been talking to a lot of writers, but as an actor, you mm -hmm. don't always necessarily have a choice. So right. how, do you, how do you, how do you navigate that? Yeah. Um, um, and, you know, and how do you choose what you want to work on? Or, you know, are, are there any, are there any points where you're like, no, I won't do that or. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. As you said, as an actor, um, I mean, until you're at a, a specific level, you're really beholden in a lot of ways to, um, you know, what you're being submitted on. Um, I, yeah, it's almost like you have more freedom when you're younger uh, or newer and you get to submit yourself on mm -hmm. whatever the heck you want. But I guess, I, I guess, um, in the beginning, you kind of end up submitting for anything and everything. And then, uh, you know, you work yourself up to getting reps who are, who are then able to submit you on hopefully bigger, better projects. And um, ideally, those reps have a sense of who you are and what your strengths are and are submitting you accordingly. And um, yeah, I mean, these, you know, TV guest stars were my bread and butter for the longest time. And life happened, um, a pandemic hit. And, you know, I, I was saying no to a lot of auditions just based on logistics alone. And um, I think, you know, my reps are very understanding of that. It's just, I'm not comfortable even like the thought of actually booking something and going on a set 
was, I, I mean, I, I just couldn't wrap my head around it for the longest time. And then at some point things shifted and then I ended up booking a gig that took me to Atlanta. Oh. I mean, isn't that nuts? It's like, I barely stepped foot outside of my house. And then it's like, I'm going to Atlanta. And it was one of those, it's like the, the character was so great. And it's like, let's just take it, you know, step by step, you know, just talking it over with my partner, just like, we'll, we'll figure it out, you know, as, as things progress. And then all of a sudden I'm flying. I haven't been on a plane. <laughs> I've barely left the greater Los Angeles area. And now I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, like stuck in a hotel for two weeks um filming an episode of the resident which wow. apparently which apparently is based in atlanta and you know and consequently films out there um but i will say like again it was one of those the character was so fun and it was kind of a meaty guest star role like i was i was basically like was it the b plot or c plot i was one of the two featured patients of that episode mm -hmm. um and yeah lo and behold I, you know, it's one of those like, oh, I'm not, I'm probably not going to get it. Oh, I, oh, I got it. Okay. <laughs> um, but, you know, before that, I had been saying no to so many things. And I actually had said no to one thing that just rubbed my reps the wrong way. Um, and then we kind of got into it. I mean, in a, in a very respectful manner. And then as it turns out, it was kind of rooted in a, a very basic misunderstanding um, of the word representation. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Okay. But right at the tail end of this kind of back and forth with, with my reps, this audition kind of swoops in. Um, and then of course that's the one I book, yeah. which you know, after really like nothing, the entire pandemic. So it's, it's just funny how things work out that way. Um, I, I'm, I'm still being a little, dis, it's, 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 a, it's a fine line, at, at least at the level, the, um, the level I'm at as an actor. It's like saying, uh, I feel like you can, you, saying no is one way of practice, you know, actually having some sort of agency, right? Mm -hmm. But then also still being mindful of how many times can I say, how many times in a row can I say no, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's, it's tricky. It's yeah. hard. You know, I mean, yeah. like, you know, I, I say no to some things, you know, mm -hmm, like, sometimes, mm -hmm. like I get asked to pitch on something and, you know, like a licensed pro project, yeah. a licensed character. And, and sometimes I'm like, I just don't have a take on it. Or yeah. sometimes I'm just like, I just can't do that. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. And, um, um, or you shouldn't be asking me to do that. You should be asking yes. somebody else, you know, yes. like, so how about I yeah. say no so that you can, and I su highly suggest that you ask somebody more appropriate than me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, um, and that's, um, and then sometimes I get offered something and it's, you know, it's like, maybe it's like a, you know, a, a thing I might get it. I might not, but like a big thing. And I'm like, huh, I don't really know that fandom at all, but that looks fun because I know nothing about it, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, and, and yeah, it's a lot of sort of like weighing, you know, what, you, what my joy level will be. Yes. It. And, um, and then, you know, I, I think it's the same thing with like the saying no is like, how many times can you say no? Because, you know, I, I'm not, I don't, I don't have like a um, flush, you know, it's like, I measure how long can I be an artist for like each gig that I get, I'm like, oh, good. I can be an artist for another month. Mm. I can be an artist for another three months. I can mm -hmm, be, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, that's how I measure my, um, oh, I thought I put it on focus, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, um, so, uh, so yeah, so it's hard, but it's scary, but I yes. think it's also really important for us artists to uh, practice doing the kind of work that we want to do that yes. is part of our sort of like mission as an artist yeah I mean it, I, I actually find it interesting Cecil to hear you say that you that you don't consider yourself an artist just at all times I feel like that's 
that's who you are. Like, that's how I see you. But I, mean, I, I do. I mean, like in terms of like, I can pay my rent and, be <laughs> and not have to like, not have to like get a job as a receptionist. Right. So right. Next packages. I, I, I mean, <sighs> but yeah. yeah, but I mean, but it, I, yeah, I mean, but it is kind of like that thing. And I mean, and I've been doing that for, you know, whatever, 13 years now where it's like, oh, I can be an artist for another three months. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then it like, you know, it, it you know, shuffles, shuffles along a little bit uh, yeah. more. So, but yeah, but I mean, I don't know. I get insecure. Sometimes I'm like, I'm oh, absolutely. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm an artist. I know. Isn't, isn't that bonkers? Like, and whatever level we're at, like, we'll always feel that because we're as artists, as creatives, we are always looking at the next gig, the next level. And then, I mean, even just today, like I was so like looking forward to this conversation. And then I just saw like bits of like casting news. And it's like, I, I wouldn't have even been considered for that role. And it's just people I knew, you know? Yeah. And I was just like, what is what is wrong with me? But it's, it's such, just the nature of the beast, you mm -hmm. know, and especially with actors, I feel, I don't, I don't know, maybe it's the same, similar to, with writers as well. It's like, you, we are just pitted against each other. We just are. And it's, it's, and, you know, at least like most of us, I feel like who have been at this for so long, we've been able to kind of pick up on that. And we're like, well, that's silly. And we can just be normal and be friends with whoever and not feel like we're constantly in competition with people because we're in the same category. Um, but, you know, just based on wherever you are in life, in, in your career, on that particular day, hey. in that moment, and then you get hit with like, oh, they're working on that. Oh, well, uh, good, good for them. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. It's like, you got to let it go, but yeah. also like, I mean, yes, like acknowledge and process that because that is just how this, it, it's, this is just how this world that we've chosen to operate in. That's just how it is. And like, okay, but like take stock of like what you have accomplished, what you are working on. Um, and you just kind of have to let go of all that. Yeah, I try to remember that it's okay to be happy for somebody and yes. for myself. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. It's like I can actually, I am a human that can carry both of those things. We we contain yeah. multitudes. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, and so I, I try to think about that. And then I've I've been like, I've been trying to, you know, be um kinder to myself in my head, mm -hmm. you know, and like, you know, um, like be mind, like do some mindfulness in that sense. Cause I, yeah. I really feel like sometimes I beat myself up inside, you know, because totally. of somebody else's news or whatever. And it's not jealousy per se. It's more sort of like my own struggle of like where I'm at or mm -hmm, my own mm -hmm, dissatisfaction. Mm -hmm. And so, and I realized that I was like really hard on my own brain. And I was like, see, like, you would never talk to a friend like that, you know, like, so, um, so I've been trying to do that. And that's been really helpful because, yeah. you know, because then it's like, then I can practice that being happy for someone and maybe sad or, you know, for myself, but like, it's like, it comes from like a real, it's, it, no, there's not like this, like, whoa, 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 you know, like big, um, sweeping things. So. That's such a good way to frame it. Like, yeah, why am I talking to myself in a way that I would never talk to someone else, right? Um, I was just talking with my friend Ming Kong, who is another talented writer uh, and composer, but he also does um, creative coaching on the side. And he, we were just talking about this voice, this inner voice that is so quick to like beat me up. And then he, you know, he was just encouraging me to like, you know what, let's, let's check in with that voice. Like what, what is, what mm -hmm. is she about? Like, what, why is she so mean? I know. <laughs> like, let's, mean? let's engage so her mean. and see yeah. what her deal is. And I was what like, a bully. The bully's coming yes, from inside the house. Such a bully. And, and, and it's like, and you know, we're, we're so quick to just like, well, let's move on. Let's forget about the bully yeah. in our own heads because we have like other things. We have life, we have work to just deal with, but, um, yeah, he made this like really intriguing suggestion of like engage with her. Yeah. But because clearly she has things to say. 
But yeah, I, mean, and I, I think that like they always say, I mean, you know, not when they're being mean, but like, you know, I think they say like things like, you know, if, you know, like I would say, let's, let's be realistic. 85% of the time I can be absolutely 100% joyful for my friends and my enemies successes. You mm -hmm, know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But like, there's that 15% of the time where it's like, you know, like it just like, yes, blah, you know, yeah. like never. Yeah. And it's like, and it's like reminding myself to look at that and being like, well, what is it pressing on? Like, what is it pressing on? Mm -hmm. Like, and so I, I like that having a conversation with it, you mm -hmm. know, because then it's sort of like, then you can like say, okay, well, what can you do about it? Exactly. What can you do so that you don't feel like that? Cause that feeling is gross and mm -hmm. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. I don't like you beating me up in my own brain and yeah. I'm feeling angry and upset about something that I probably didn't even want, you know, like want to do, you know? Right. So, right. so um, yeah. Um, how, all right, what, okay, we did that. How do you know what you're going to figure out what you're going to work on? We kind of talked about that. Uh, what is your, what's your art process or okay, this is a, a, either a three-pronged question or you can just take one part of it. Okay. What is your art process or do you have an art theory, like a theory about being, you know, being an artist mm -hmm. um, or what's the best art advice that you've given that you give or that you've gotten? And I can, I can break it up if you want. <laughs> yes. Give, give it, give it to me one at a time. Art yeah. process. Yeah. What's our, yeah. Art process. Do you art have an process. art process? Um, like, do you have an acting pro like what's your acting process? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, uh, now, now it feels like inside the actor's studio. Um, I, I don't see, this is going to sound funny because no. I don't know if I have a, a process. Like I'm sure I do, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm of the school of thought where you draw from whatever practices work for you. So I don't necessarily subscribe to like a school of acting or one instructor. Um, yeah, I kind of pull from what works for me. And, you know, and that has even shifted during the pandemic. Um, I will say something that came up in, in conversation with my friend Min was, I, I remember, um, you know, with actors, it's like, it's pretty common when you receive the script, you just immediately start highlighting your lines and right, right. hope, you know, do the whole hole punching thing, put it in your you know, little binder. Um, I even worked with an actor once and I thought this was so cool. He actually bound his script into his own little notebook that he could carry around and write notes in it. and then. For the longest time, I like would beat myself up because I was like, why can't I do that? You know, like it would take me forever to just highlight my lines. And then it's like, and now we're going to be like performing. Like, what is wrong with me? And like just kind of imposing these weird um, expectations on something so trivial. And then I just eventually realize I like to circle my lines with pencil. Like that's just what I do. And I actually like having the leave uh, the, the, the sheets of paper kind of loose so I can just like fling them around and flip through them and just accepting that. I think that's my thing yeah. as opposed to like, why can't I do it like them? Why can't I do it like these other actors? Um, and it's so funny how it took me forever to just accept like, no, I, this works for me. This is, this is what I do. Um, I mean, that's just kind of one example of how things it. Can, can shift and um, how I'm learning to embrace my pencil circling self, you know? Um, so, yeah. And then also like during the pandemic, I, I've had to really hone in on what, what makes this fun for me? Mm -hmm. What about, and again, because most of the, you know, it, the self-tape auditions, I, I, I'm not privy to what I'm getting submitted on until I get the notice of like, here's the project, here's your character, here are the sides. And some I'm really excited about. And some it's like, ah, how do I, how do I find the hook mm -hmm. for this character? And um, I like, I like defaulting to voice. If I can find the right sound for the character, and I can go through all the lines and it sounds believable to me. Like, okay, yes, this is how this character would speak. So now the, the words make sense coming out of their mouth. And there have been times where it's like, I'm not, I don't have the sound yet. 
so it's not, I'm not able to kind of sink into it. Um, so I guess that's that's one method of trying to uh, approach a character. Um, and also I've gone back to just printing out sides, like printing out hard copies. <laughs> just another little thing where I was like, I used to be able to just like work off of this, you know, the screen, either you know, tablet or laptop and just committed to commit the lines to memory. And now it's like, you know what? I like having the loose sheets of paper. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think embracing the, what your way is, is good because I think when we start out, um, you know, like there, we think that there are these rules for how mm -hmm. you're supposed to be, like how I'm supposed to be a writer. I'm supposed to write from this time to this time. And, you know, and, and I'm supposed to have this many words a day and I'm supposed, you know, this is what it's supposed to be. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, and, and I, you know, have my own way of doing things and, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and that's, my method and uh you know and it is always every project every um every year it changes mm -hmm. and grows yeah. and, you know maybe sometimes i'll get like a new trick maybe i will lose a trick maybe i'll rediscover something that mm -hmm. i you know did at the beginning or mm -hmm. or you know um uh you know that's that's part of the process and that's part yeah. of the growth you know yeah I love hearing though, like that you're, um, that you're embracing your circling of, uh, lines because, because I think that, that, you know, um, because just something as simple as that, it sounds to me like it gives you the freedom that you need to be able to do your work. Yeah. And, you know, honest, I have, to, again, I have to give my credit to my friend, Min, who, uh, who helped me kind of realize that, you know, it, it's like, yeah, these, these systems or processes that you observe other people committed to, you know, I, it, you, if you find it appealing and it may just not apply to everyone, yeah. including yeah. you. So you have to figure out what, what works for you. And like you were saying, like you might reconfigure some stuff and lose some stuff, gain some stuff. And um, yeah. And I think going kind of project to project in yeah. that way, kind of letting the, the project or the character kind of, I don't know, not, I mean, not to speak to you, but yeah, how, how does, how are you kind of inspired to tackle this and make this fun for yourself to get yourself to that finish line? Yeah. What, mm -hmm. okay. So then I'm going to move to the next part, which is best advice that you've gotten or that you, that you, that you, you that you always give. Uh, ha, 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 ha. It could be either or. Yeah. Well, best advice it, it's funny because it's like, is it the best advice I've given? Depending on, advice. depending on how it's received. Um, yeah. <laughs> I will say, you know, what I, what I discovered, um, uh, I maybe I, I'm glad I discovered it earlier, uh, as early as I did. Um, the definition of success can change for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you start out wide eyed, um, you know, just seeing everything through rosy hued glasses and you're like, I'm going to make it. And this is how I envision myself. And then you kind of go through the grind. You find yourself like in that hustle, doing that hustle. Um, and then things can shift. Your goalposts can change. Um, what, you know, what these markers of success mean for you all of that can be adjusted because there are no rules, <laughs> you know? And it's like, there's no, especially for actors, there's no actual template or guide for you to like, even if you hit all these marks, you are a successful actor. Um, so yeah, and allowing yourself to acknowledge that and be okay with that, you know? I, I will tell you who it is when we're, when we're not on, on here, because I want to preserve, I want to preserve it for myself. But uh, about 10 years ago, um, gosh, maybe even longer than that. I was having a pity party for myself <clears throat> in terms of my career. I think it was maybe 20 years ago. And, um, and I, uh, I put on a movie and, you know, had some wine, was crying. And then, uh, and then was like, that, 
actor seems super cool. I was like, what if I made him my measure of success? Because that goalpost keeps changing. And like, you know, it's like, okay, if I get published, if I get this, if I get, and then, you know, and so I was like, what if I said that my, I will be successful when that guy wants to have a beer with me? I may already be successful. I may never be successful. I will never know (laughs) because it's whether or not this actor, I'm on his radar and he's like, that Cecil Castellucci seems like she'd be cool to have a beer with, you know, like I'd like to pal around with her and talk about art for an evening at the bar, you know? Um, And uh, that made everything better, you know, because, and I go see this actor, I see everything that they're in. Wow. Like flown to New York. (gasps) Wait, were you a fan? Were you a fan of this actor prior to to that moment? I I mean, I was a, no, I I was not a fan. I like after that moment, you like honed it. Yeah, I was like, I was like, this is this person, there's something special about them. And oh. they are the measure of my success. And I may never know if I'm successful or not. It has been like 20 years now. So I could be successful. Yeah. I could not be successful. Yeah. But what a, what a fun thing, you know? Um, I will say, um, I did think of, a. I, I don't even know if it was a piece of advice, but as an actor, um, especially um, uh, for theater, I remember someone said to me, as soon as you step on that stage, I guess there are two different. Um, okay, so the first the first bit that that um, always stuck with me. This was in high school, and I don't even think this friend was even trying to impart anything, mm-hmm. you know, a worldly and wise. I think he was just trying to help me with my nerves, like for an audition or whatever. And he's like, "As soon as you step on that stage, you're that character." Mm-hmm. And it was so simple, but like that has always stayed with me. And then I remember hearing, gosh, I don't know who told me this, but that, that the play that you're performing, that could be someone's very first play oh. and that could be someone's very last play. Oh my gosh. And that has always stuck with me, you know? So I feel like, I don't know. I, you know, I mean, I'm thinking about it now, yeah. really like, but I think something that has been kind of ingrained in what I do, especially like in terms of, you know, my stage work, it's like, I never, I never want to phone it in because like that is always in the, you know, in the back of my mind or just like in, just in me, Yeah. you know, like I don't want to phone it in for that person who was seeing a play for the very first time mm-hmm. or the person who is, this is, this could be their last show. That's you know? very, very beautiful. I, feel like I had that same, it's not the same thing in terms of performance, but in terms of doing school visits, you know, I do a lot of school visits. And this one time I did a school visit at this school, really rough school. And um, uh, they were not paying attention. They were, you know, seniors in high school and a a spitball landed on my face. And I just thought, what the hell am I doing here? Like, this is a waste of my time. And, um, you know, but I like did my thing, you know, did my visit. And, um, and then, uh, and then like three years later, I got this message. Uh, it was after my first book. So it was like my space time and, um, on my space. And it was like, hello, Miss Castellucci. Um, you don't know me. Uh, you came to my school and did a visit. Um, I'd never seen an author before and, uh, I decided to, um, you know, apply for a writing program and I'm in a, I'm in a, you know, I'm in my third year at, um, I think Santa Barbara university, um, in the creative writing program. And I just wanted to say thank you. And, you know, it was really inspiring to have you come to my class. And I was like, (gasps) that was a spitball day. Like (laughs) the day that a spitball landed on my face. And that was a really good lesson because I was like, you never know who's listening in the classroom. Yeah. And so, you know what? Like, it's not about, it's, you know, it's, yeah. So it was. was Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just, I feel for you having to experience that, but that spitball, like we've, we've also been in situations where it's like a figurative spitball and you're just like, 
And you could so easily just like, yep, give up and be like, I'm done. Yeah. And either you actually leave or you just check out mentally. But it's like you made a commitment and maybe that's just me um, or, you know, <laughs> standing to it. Yeah. still still standing firmly by our moral compass um yeah. but yeah carry yeah. it through carry it out and and my goodness yeah and you like never know respect. who's paying attention yeah it's the respect for the audience uh not only at a school visit but also in the, the audience that you're you know that you're that you're playing in front of because mm -hmm. it, it yeah I, I love that I really love that that's too. the thing too it's like I can never as much as you want to as an actor I never want to blame the audience because you know you'll hear it, it it's very it's not uncommon to be like oh this audience or like oh this matinee <laughs> oh right. you know so and so and it's like you know what but that's, that's what they're experiencing, right. you know, for whatever reason, if they're not being vocal enough or, or laughing or reacting at, at you know, um, weird times or moments that we weren't getting reactions to previously, like that's, that's live theater, exactly. you know, and as much as you want to be like, these guys don't get yeah. it or they're not appreciate. It's like, but that's what they're experiencing. Yeah. And it's like, what a challenge as an actor to really check yourself and not lean into whatever you think the audience is or, or is or not um, giving you. And you know? has, that, has that ever taught you something about the character that you're playing? Like when you do something and you've never gotten a reaction for it and then suddenly you get a reaction for it? Has it, has it ever... It, I'm sure that sometimes it's like, what the hell is this audience? But has it ever been like, wow, huh, right. I didn't realize this about. This yeah. Character. I mean, that's, that's the, that's the, the better way of things of that situation playing out. Right. right. Where you're like, Oh, a new discovery or like, Oh, uh, the audience really responded to this in a positive way. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, it's like, I, I'm not getting the reactions I always get right. in these moments. What is happening? And then instead of having that inform the performance and the character, I feel like the battle there is to stay true to the character and the performance you've developed, as opposed to letting those external factors affect you as the actor right. and either like, Ooh, should I start like bending a little bit and maybe trying to cater to what I think the audience might respond to, which I, I, I don't think ever really works. Um, and if you get some laughs or if you get some reactions, it's, it's not, they're not, I don't know. I feel like they're not true right, right. to the overall performance and show. Right. Um, so yeah, if anything, those have been lessons in like really staying committed to yeah. what is true the actual character, you know, like they're not gonna do this out of nowhere just because you as the actor is trying to take it and take the show in a different direction, yeah. or, you know, um, get something out of that audience. So yeah, I feel like that's that's the lesson in those moments. <laughs> oh, interesting, I love it. <laughs> um, okay, I feel like we talked about this a little bit already. So maybe to do a different spin on it, mm. um, but did you, uh, did you, um, what what did you learn in the pandemic or grow or did you do something new during the pandemic that you'd never done before yeah yeah um yeah I mean there were definitely like um some low points <laughs> uh just I I do feel like yeah there was there was a point where I the, the joy and acting was just not there, partly because the acting was just not happening. And then those moments of acting, mostly in the form of these self-tape auditions, it just became such a chore. And um, I thought I was doing a pretty decent job phoning it in. And then it got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm not able to mask the fact that I'm phoning these in apparently, okay. Um, so yeah, kind of getting back to basics. Um, you know, one little, one little thing that kind of turned things around for me was finding friends, kind of um, casting accordingly based on like what the scene was. Um, yeah, and you know, shout out to my friend, Stephen Hu, who was 
we, <laughs> another kind of leap made during the pandemic. I went to Boise, Idaho to take part in a reading festival. I know it's, it's like, I haven't left the house and then like off I go to Boise like Atlanta, and then off I go Boise, to Atlanta. Yeah. It's like, why couldn't I, you know, it's like instead of baby <laughs> step, but I, I feel like that, it's interesting. I feel like that is also significant, you know, right. it, it because what took me to, took me completely out of my comfort zone during a pandemic was the material. Right. So I, I was approached to take part in this reading out in Boise, Idaho. And I was like, I have no, in, I have, I could have lived my entire life without ever going to Boise, Idaho. No offense, lovely, lovely um, Boise Contemporary Theater, wonderful people there. Um, but I think because I was in the middle of a pandemic and I was not acting and probably at a point where I was like, it's just, I'm not acting. I don't feel like an actor. There's no fun in it, especially with these self-tape auditions. I'm just knocking out. And um, it was Stephanie Kingston Walters. That's how I was first introduced to her work. And I'm reading this play and I'm being offered, it's a reading, but I'm being offered the lead role of this Korean American woman who is, you know, who is dealing with her dysfunctional family having grown up in Koreatown and her conflicted relationship with the neighborhood that she is so, that her family was so entrenched in. And I was like, I, I love this play. I want to be a part of this play. Am I going to Boise, Idaho for this play? And that's exactly what I did. And I'm so glad that I did. Um, it was, it was a director that I respected and I trusted him and he had gathered this amazing, and it was one of those experiences, Cecil, where like everyone was cool. You know, yeah. you know how usually there's like at least one yeah. bad egg or one person yeah. who doesn't quite jive yeah. with everyone else, but this this team was, they were so amazing. And who'd have thought this, you know, gaggle of Asians just like <laughs> sauntering through Boise, Idaho. Um, just having a great time and being able to like, I mean, just really like, just be, I, I, I got to be it's like, just like a theater nerd and do like a deep dive in, in, in you know, script table work and, um, uh, and provide dramaturgical assistance, you know, because I just knew this character so well. And I mean, what a gift it was as an actor, as an actor of color, a Korean American actor to have to get to be, to have the opportunity to play this role where I, I know her. So then there, I, the homework doesn't go into like figuring out the backstory right. and what makes her tick. Why is she saying and acting this, these ways? And it's like, I just know. And then, so it just allowed me the chance to just mine an even more complex nuanced performance right. because I was already there with her it's amazing, it's amazing. and I it, and I had to go to Boise Idaho to do that. it sounds to me like something that you learned or during the mm. pandemic was mm. to leave your bubble and yeah. like really like be brave enough to 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 go you know what I mean to um to adventure. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was truly just leaving my comfort zone, like yeah. both literally and figuratively. Um, but I felt like the rewards were, were so monumental. Um, and then, um, so yeah, I guess allowing myself to like, I don't go on these Leap. like mini, mini yeah. adventures, like take these leaps. Yeah. Um, to, I mean, and you know, it's like, I can't help but be a little selfish about it being away from home and family. But like, I think my actor self really needed that. Yeah. At, at that point That's in amazing. time too, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, honestly, like if it was, if we weren't in the middle of a pandemic, I, I would hope that I would, you know, still like making, making money, doing these like TV gigs here and there. So I, I think it would have been a much easier, no, thank you. Right. Right. But because I was stuck at yeah. home and just yeah, yeah. like wanting to do something. Yeah. And then lo and behold, this play is just, you know, handed to me. Um, yeah. So 
and like being open to exploration too. Yeah. Like instead of immediately saying, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. Like maybe, maybe yeah. can I read the script? Can I ask some questions? And then there you go. Yeah. Growth. I think it's like growth is like the biggest, biggest mm. thing. All right. Uh, is there one thing that you've done that you wish had had more love on it? <laughs> I feel like all my theater stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that, that sounds because those are so fleeting, right? As so well. fleeting and yeah. only, you know, but I, I will say like whenever someone's like, I saw you in such and such play and, and like those, oh, they just hit me in a different way. You know, the yeah. fact that you were there, you saw me live and, right. um, like and just remember particular intersection. Yeah, and just remembering like what a special show that was and all the, you know, people involved yeah. because with theater, it truly takes a village and yeah. a village of particular individuals who are there for the art, for that show to yeah. happen because we're not there for the money. Yeah. Absolutely not. But yeah, and then I'll do like a few episodes on This Is Us and that's all people care. <laughs> and then I have people like from high school messaging me because now I'm like a legitimate actor. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I get that. Like, you know, it's like, it's like, uh, you know, you know, I love Batgirl. I love writing Batgirl, but it's like, that's the thing that like some of my friends are like, oh, not, not, not our friends, but you know. Like, right, no, you, yes. Um, uh, okay, um, are you oh if you weren't an artist if you weren't an yes, actor yes. if you weren't a creative person is there anything is there any other profession that you would have been like what would what a, what what is a alternate world julia yeah i you know i thought i would be a visual artist when i was a child um i took art classes and i i guess i showed some uh promising talent and potential as like, you know, in my elementary school years. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know if that's necessarily the path I would have taken. I almost wonder if I would have gone into academia. Hmm. Yeah. And I, I almost feel like that's how I all ended up an actor because I was kind of taking the academic route you know, I, I was doing, I did theater in high school, I did it in college, and then after college, the next obvious step is grad school, right? And so I was, I was prepping and auditioning for MFAs, um, for MFA programs. And then because I didn't get into any of my schools, I was like, but I'm on this track, so I, this is just what I'm going to keep doing. And um, I think maybe it would have been similar had I uh, studied something else. And I don't know, maybe eventually become a professor or something. <laughs> maybe, a, maybe a doctor. In, maybe I mean, not like a medical doctor, but maybe like I would have gotten like a, a doctorate or something. Doctor, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah, I mean, I always just sort of my default is like astronaut, but I know that's not <laughs> true because I'm, you know, would I don't think I would fare very well, like, um, you know, in a small capsule. So I think maybe that wouldn't. But I think like, you know, um, like space scientist of some sort, mm. of thing, like, you know, or space, space, something space adjacent, you know, yeah, yeah. Would, have my, um, would have been my thing. Um, but there are many, but then like, I think of like 50 million other things that I could have, could have been. Um, okay. Uh, are you currently binging anything, obsessed with anything? Uh, it could be anything. It could be like I'm obsessed with making pies, or like you know. I I wish. Um, I am obsessed with. Hmm. I I mean, I feel like during the pandemic, I've like dabbled in and like explored certain things. Like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Um, sustainable home goods, sustainable okay. cleaning products. No, yeah, sustainable goods. Overall, yeah. does that yeah. is that a category? Yeah, that's a category. Yeah, I think like I that. Like it. Yeah, I mean, not everyone in in the house is super keen on it, but I'm just like trying stuff out. Yeah. So like, um, yeah, just even like starting out with like my own kind of bath products, like trying to do away with all the plastic bottles. Yeah. In the bathroom, uh, going back to bar soaps and shampoos, yeah. and even you know um, whatever I can get my hands on, and you know. Um, 
mixed mixed levels of of success, but I, I've I found and discovered some wonderful brands and companies that um, I'm happy to support, and I love their products. So it's been kind of an interesting. I, I'm sure I'm not the only one as well during this pandemic. Like, what are I, I think just seeing how much waste yeah, that yeah. You, that one household can produce. You're like, how do I? how do I minimize that? Or how can I manage that? Just, you know, being one person. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I totally agree. I uh, have been um, really dealing with my food waste. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, I have, I've like, I, I, I started, um, you know, I dabbled in my sour, I had a sourdough starter <laughs> phase. Um, I never got into full on bread loaf mode. I was, I yeah. got, I got, I had a pretty good run of, um, making little savory pancakes oh. because I realized the chewy kind of texture of the sourdough starter is very similar to like these Korean pancakes. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, and you can, you know, add green onions or, you know, kimchi or what have you. Um, but yeah, one thing I've also, I've held on to is um, making my own orange peel household cleaner. Oh, that's cool. Just orange peels and vinegar. And you just let it sit in a dark corner for like at least two weeks. And then you have a DIY household cleaner. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to do that because I yeah. have vinegar, uh, to clean with like, um, for the past, like few months actually, yeah. Yeah. um, but I never thought, and I have an orange tree, so I never thought like to, all right, I'm, I'm sold. <laughs> you got it. You're on, you got this. Okay. Now I'm going to ask, this is a final question. I want to know where people can find you, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we already had, we started oh. this conversation at the beginning. I know. Um, I <laughs> I was nervous about this question because I don't have a website. I um, and I think, I, love, I think you got to get a website. I love that you're just like you need to get a website you need because to get I a felt website. like I felt like I because I was getting enough work without having a website, so I thought I was okay. But here's the thing, because I also I do casting for artist subplay and for these readings. Or I mean, it's been a while since we've had like a main stage or in person program, but you know we've had virtual readings during the pandemic. And we've, we've also been expanding beyond our own kind of, you know, what, what AAPI stands for. Like we want to be able to expand that meet or fully um, honor that category of peoples. Mm -hmm. And so I'm in casting mode, looking for actors or, you know, trying to suss them out, look up their materials. And then I'm like, what if someone's out there trying to look for me as an actor, which is so basic. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it had been a while since I let the juliacho.com I mean, domain name. I think I'm just gonna say that I think yeah. I, you know, it could just be simple and it could yep. have like, you know, just a little your short bio or you know, short one, yep. one you yep. know, and uh, yep. you know, yeah, your real like I don't know. I, that's what I think. No, no, I I I've taken steps. <laughs> I have taken steps towards finally. I I, I can't get back juliacho.com, sadly. Like I had it at one point and then I lost it and now I can't get it. So um, I am that Julia Cho on Instagram and uh, Twitter. Would it be weird to have that Julia Cho dot com as my official no. website? Right, like because my handle is already that. I think it's great. Okay, cool. And you are you're that. that Julia Cho, right? Because there is a writer Julia. Cho, I know, and because because I, I googled to try to find your website, and I was like, that's not Julia. That's, that's not, not Julia she. Cho. She co-wrote Turning Red, the the latest um, Disney Pixar film. Oh wow! So I mean, her name is actually popping up a lot, and I, yeah. this inevitably happens. I got tagged. Or I, I've been tagged in a couple of her photos, like from the premiere. And I was like, oh, I'm not, I'm that, I'm yeah. the other Julia Cho. You're that Julia Cho. Yeah. 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 Not this yeah, one, no. but that one. Yeah. yeah. I think, um, I think that, that, I think, yeah, because it goes with your, your Instagram and Twitter, but yeah, anyway, so that's perfect. And everyone should, um, should uh, go and um, s support Julia and the um, the act the artists at play uh, for the new thing that's coming up in summer. Please let me know because I will be there. Um, yeah. Julia, thank you so much for coming and talking. Art thank process. you for having me, Cecil. Oh, oh my nice. gosh, it's, I'm really glad too. Um, because I want to talk to more than just writers. And so thank you for being my first non-writer. Oh my uh, gosh, that I, that first I... non-writer. Yeah, what an honor. I mean, you're a writer as well. You know, you Ish. can write. Yeah, but you know, but you know what I mean? Like to, it's, yeah. it was fun to talk about like, um, 
you know, your artistic process in terms of acting, which I yeah. love so much. You know, yeah. I love theater and I love acting so much, but it's not my thing. So I'm kind yeah. of a fan girl in that way. Yeah. So. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. All right, now I press stop.